views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Truth is funny with Colette Steffen. We'll have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network as she provides energetic shifts and consistent results in every area of life, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success. Many people who shift out of limiting beliefs roar with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. The truth is funny. Shift happens. Feel instant relief. Stay tuned for more fun and release struggle and suffering. And now, here's your host, Colette Steffen. This is Colette Marie Steffen. Welcome to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay tuned for the next hour to experience the instant relief of using your intuition to solve life's most challenging problems. Shift happens every Wednesday at 8 o'clock a.m. Pacific Time, live on the airwaves and in the archives at thetruthisfunny.com, transformationtalkradio.com, and Transformation. Uh, sorry, TransformationRadio.fm. So the energetic shifts are still accessible through what I call HSN, the Higher Self Network, if you're listening later. It is my pleasure to share life-transforming information and provide you with an opportunity to call in and delete energetic weaknesses to shift challenges into possibilities. We do love to hear from you. Feel free to call in 1-800-930-2819. Speaking of feeling free, my guest today is Feel Free. (laughs) He first began using energy work to improve his life when he was affected by allergy symptoms in 1998 and has continued to apply energy techniques for everyday issues to facilitate improvement for himself, his family, friends, clients, and feels strongly that others can benefit from it too. Phil was born and raised in San Francisco to French parents. He grew up bilingual and received a journeyman certificate from the Musicians Institute in Los Angeles in 2001. Phil has lived up and down the coast of California before settling in Tucson, Arizona in 2009 with his family. First met Phil um, in 2008 and we have been working together ever since. Are you there, Phil? Yes, I am. Hey, yes. is it is it sunny in Arizona? <laughs> uh, yes, it is. Those of us that are in the rainy part of Canada in the United States know what that feels like. We can't remember. What does it feel like? <laughs> yeah, it's this yellow thing that shines in the sky. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so today, um, show, you know, I, I, I was kind of laughing because uh, earlier, because uh, we decided to talk about, you know, how we all can be geniuses and we can also all have those stupid moments. (laughs) So, um, you know, do you want to just, I'm going to give you the floor. Tell us um, your thoughts about this, Phil. Sure. So, right. You know, all humans, we have a lot throughout a day. We have so many, we don't uh, count them, right? And so, uh, you know, not thoughts that we go with, some that we don't go with. And so, you know, part of what I want to talk about is being able to identify, identify which thoughts are worth doing and which ones are not worth pursuing. Right now, there's a lot of uh, thoughts that people um, think are good ideas, but uh, it's not just a matter of thinking about it, as we're going to see and talk about more. <laughs> 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 and, you know, when we follow those thoughts that are genius, sometimes those are really amazing. And then when we follow those other ones, think are genius, but um, we're energetically weak to, what happens? Well, usually things don't go the way we want them to, uh, <laughs> to put it mildly. So, you know, that's that's the bottom line. So, you know, that's, that's what we're going to get at. Too. It's like sometimes we have a feeling and it feels, you know, a certain way, you know. And sometimes we have thoughts that, that, you know, like feel like they're sound logic, but they don't necessarily pan out for whatever reason. So ideally, we want the thought and the feeling to be in, in harmony together. We want there to be logic and, you know, the logic to be sound. And we like the feeling to be sound as well. You know, a lot of times it's one or the other. 
lot of people tend to go with their gut more. Some people go with their head more. So for us, it's just like I want to encourage people to, to use both, to use both our uh, our thoughts, our brains, basically, and our uh, feeling to make decisions uh, so that we don't end up in uh, weak places and places where we are uh, basically not getting what we want. And then a lot of times we don't have answers for that either. This kind of solves the mystery in many ways of <laughs> the missing link of why it is that, you know, our – plan that seems so good on paper didn't pan out not that plan on paper thing <laughs> tell us more about that i i um don't I, i've learned myself um i don't make plans anymore i um plan things out and um uh and i i take consistent steps of action towards my goals but i recognize that sticking to the plan can sometimes not work so well. Do you want to explain why that is? Well, sure. So again, I mean, you mentioned the energy. So that's what we're going to look at. So when somebody has a plan, uh, it's not just about the logic. It's about the entire energy that goes into it. So, um, you know, it may look like it's a good plan on paper and things like that. At the same time, it's like, um, we may not have factored everybody. We may not have factored everything that there is to factor into the equation. And therefore, you know, um, things are not going to pan out the way we want to. And now there's account for more. That's what we're doing here. I mean, ideally we account for everything. Um, I, I can't guarantee that everybody who does this will account for everything, but at the same time, um, I can, you know, I can pretty much assure that, uh, we'll, you know, have a vast, you know, um, perspective as they do this more. So, um, so what we're showing, what we're showing is that, yeah, the, what goes on paper is, is sometimes of a feeling. Sometimes it's, it's just plenty of love, but it's void of feeling. So, um, we, we don't know if it's strong or not, in other words. And if it doesn't feel strong, it's not going to pan out the way we want. To. Things are going to go wrong. Things to account for are going to start to happen. People are not going to get along with us. Just a few examples of what could and what usually does. And so what do you suggest people do? Right. So what I suggest people do is that when they have a thought, that they also notice if there's a reaction that goes with that thought. And if the reaction is uh, negative, if it bothers them in any way, that – that's usually a flag to tell us that there's something to solve or proceed or to not go into that direction at all, one or the other. So what happens is in, most people will, you know, or many people will bypass that feeling and just go ahead with the thought anyway. So what I'd like to sh show people and tell people about is um, you have this, re you know, you may have a thought like I want to go to a store and then you may have a reaction that comes with that. Or you may have a no reaction. If there's no reaction, if it just feels okay, there's nothing that bothers you about that thought, no negative reaction whatsoever, then it's fine. You can go ahead and do that. On the other hand, if you sense like, wait, there's just something off about it or uh, I'm not sure if it's a good time or not, well, then it's worth exploring some more. So with our energy work, you know, we get ourselves centered when we feel that reaction. Get ourselves centered to it. And once we feel centered – we ask ourselves again the same question. We notice if the same reaction comes up or not. Usually, if we got ourselves centered appropriately, it will not. We will not have the same reaction. So we'll notice if there's still any reaction. If there's still another reaction, we'll do the same process again. Notice what the reaction is and center our energy. And we'll keep doing that process until there is no reaction anymore. And then it's like you ask yourself the question, and then your mind will be clear on whether to do this or not be like okay i'll do it or okay i won't do it but there won't be a reaction that bothers you to go with that yes and you know we talk about this that um we all have this ability to get in touch with what is weak and strong um energy within ourselves by going inward and feeling and so um, when we come back we'll talk a bit more about that you're listening to the truth is funny on transformation talk radio with colette marie stefan and my guest today feel free and when we return we will continue to take calls 1-800-930-2819 let's make some shift happen <laughs> What?
What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. What is a brilliant culture and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Thrive is what we experience when our mind, body, and soul operate as one. When we thrive, we excel on all levels. Thrive is the mindset that matters. It is essential to our being. Have you ever found yourself looking for the instruction manual on how to thrive? You'll find everything you need to help you feel strong, powerful, and peaceful in your own body. So don't waste any more time. Visit thrivebygen.com today. Gifted intuitive healer and spiritual teacher, Sarah Luce, brings her unique style to the hit show, Small Steps, Big Breakthrough Radio, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month as Sarah turns reality on end and shows us how to experience expansive results with simple yet powerful steps. Expect an enlightening bend on what you currently believe is possible. For show details and upcoming topics, visit SarahLoose.com. That's S-A-R-A-L-O-O-S.com. We're back on The Truth is Funny with Colette Marie Stephan and my guest today, Phil Free. Phil, just share your contact information with everyone so that they can reach you if they want to. They can reach me at whatphil at hotmail.com, W-H-A-T-P-H-I-L at hotmail.com. All right. And uh, we are happy to take calls today, 1-800-930-2819. And we were talk- talking before the break here about um, making plans, putting it on paper, and then um, having a reaction. And so um, that that reaction would indicate to us that there is probably an energetic weakness there that stress. Do you want to um, just explain a little bit further what you Sure. So that, you know, weakness, whatever, that imbalance is going to present itself usually in the form of a thought, a sensation, or emotion. And so when we write down something, the reaction can be different, any one of those things. You know, it could be a mental thing, right? It could be doubt. Like, do I doubt that this plan is going to work? Now, is it a rational doubt? Is it an irrational doubt? You know, is it a doubt that is the doubt worth listening to or not? You know, is there any substance to that doubt or not? So if there's no substance to the doubt, then we don't then we can sort of wipe that doubt from the equation. And uh, that doesn't need a factor. And now if it's a sensation that comes up, same kind of thing. We'll know it's okay. We might have a plan. We read it. And every, every time we read it, like we get a knee jerk or something like that. So same thing, you know, um, you know, we want to get ourselves centered. You know, we go to this midline that we have that bisects our body from left to right, this vertical line. 
we get ourselves centered by put, putting our attention there when we read it, when we can feel that reaction. And, and same thing, we notice if there's subsequent re- reactions that go with that first sensation. If there are, we keep centering ourselves. And until we get to the point that we can read that statement and not have that knee jerk. And then, like, if it's a, an emotion, sometimes, you know, it's like somebody might make a plan and there's emotion that comes up around that. It could be anger or, or grief or something. And um, same thing, get ourselves centered there. And same thing, you know, we don't want to proceed with our plan, ideally, until we have solved all the negative reactions that have come up, whether the thoughts, sensations, or emotions. And they'll come usually in one of those forms. And uh, it's up to us to identify it and not to just ignore it or just jump over it but to, to, to solve it before proceeding. And if we do solve it, usually the plan goes much smoother. <laughs> do, you, do you have an example, a real live example from your own life? Well, <laughs> you can share yeah. I, mean, I can take examples from almost any day of my life because, yes, it's, <laughs> something I, it's something I apply in my daily life at this point. So when I make a plan, yes, I, I factor in, um, I, I do my best to look at the whole picture, you know, and then um, when the then I am in every uh, detail that goes into the picture and all the people they go into it. And, you know, ideally, same thing, you know, in an ideal situation, you get all the right people, all the right things, you know, you, you buy all the right parts, so to speak. It doesn't always work out that way. But the more I do this, the more it does work out for me. So, um for example, you know, I have all kinds of projects. I mean, uh, for example, like gardens, you know, I do gardens, you know, I grow a lot of stuff. And um, basically, you know, there are times where when I started this, you know, started these gardens years ago where, yes, it was just I was taking a more, at, you know, regular person approach to this. You know, I would hire people to help, hire companies to help. And um, the results were Good, but there'd also be problems at times. Sometimes the results weren't so good. And uh, over the time, as I've been doing this, I've been um, getting myself stronger to all the things that have gone wrong in the past, all the things that have upset me. Um, and as I've done that, it's like the process is re- as refined in a way. And the people, it's like I've sort of um, siphoned the people I work with down to just the people I like the most. And uh, since I've worked with different people over the years, you know, I've been able to siphon down to just the people I like the most. And by doing that, so I get, everything gets stronger. Like it, now when I do some like work on my garden stuff, now it's like I um, get myself balanced and stressed, centered, in other words, to – all the plans that I have, uh, if I think about a garden, I think, okay, I want to plant this and this and this. So I get myself centered to all the outcome that can happen. I get centered to whether this succeeds or it doesn't succeed. And then I get myself centered to all the, you know, to all the elements involved, whether it's the weather, whether it's the seeds, whether it's the soil, you know, and same thing, whether they're going to succeed or not. I understand there's a vulnerability to every aspect of this that I don't control. Like I, I need every to do its part I, I i can control only so much and the main thing that i can control is emotion my reaction through it all and so if i'm taking continue with this garden example so I, you know the soil if there's any helpers if it's going to be my family or if it's, uh, you know hired help or whatever um then same thing that those people are in line with what's happening that they're centered they're strong to the plan and again it takes a long time to get something like what I'm talking about really, really strong. But like I said, I mean, that started years ago and now. Garden now. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, maybe uh, <laughs> one day I should send some pictures here. But yes, I mean, uh, yeah. definitely working our way towards being a showcase, you know. Right. Awesome. Right. Um, we do um, have a caller, I think, Brian. Um, I like to take calls when, when they come in. Yes. Brian? Yes. Um, do Thank- we have a caller? Yes, we do. It's Marcus from Hotlanta, Georgia. Welcome to our show. Oh, wait a minute. Hello, Marcus. Yes. Oh. There he goes. Let's try that again. And now here is from Hotlanta, Georgia, Marcus. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Colette Steele? <laughs> Are you there, Marcus? Hi. Yes, how you doing, Colette Steele? <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Good for you today. 
Yes, I'm about to uh, start an online business, and I just want to strengthen myself to be able to um, make you know pretty decent money, pretty good money. It's my first online business, so if you can strengthen any weaknesses to that, I would definitely appreciate okay. it. Okay. Do you want to make pretty good money, or do you want to make good money? <laughs> I want to make good money. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first weakness. <laughs> but I'm going to turn this over to Phil. <laughs> um, Phil. All right, cool. So the first thing that I'm picking up on is uh, let's wipe the slate clean in a sense, you know, uh, of all the past experience that didn't work out. All right. So that you're not bringing all that luggage from the past into this experience, all the negative thought, expectations, whatever they might be worry, doubt, like all the things I might have just mentioned too. So same thing. When you get in touch with the business, you're going to notice what reactions come up. Is it a worry? Is it a doubt? Is it, uh, is it, uh, somebody else is not approving what you're doing, whatever it is. So you identify that for a second and then put your attention, you know, in your midline, basically center yourself. And, um, that's what you're going to do. You know, just apply that process as you think about your business. You know, you can look at the different aspects. You can write it on paper. Be like, all right, this is, these are my financial goals. These are uh, what I, you know, the, the, how I want to get along with my, um, you know, my social goals. Like how do I want to get along with my uh, uh, coworkers, the clients, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so well, every time you get in touch with something, if you notice a worry, a doubt, a sensation, an emotion come up, you center yourself, all right? So right now, so let me just ask you, is there, like, how, like on a scale of 0 to 10, we like to do this, how much is the concern bothering you about this, uh, about this uh, making money, this job, basically? Uh, maybe about a 5 or a 6. 5 or 6. All right, so why don't we do this? Like, I'll, I'll, you know, have you apply the process right now. What is the first thought, sensation, or emotion that bothers you that you associate with this? Um, anxiety about about it not working out. Okay, right, right. So let's just get that same thing. Let's get ourselves centered to all the experience, um, things not working out for you. So again, it's like you didn't have, you know, a lot of times, you know. You, this is the missing link. A lot of times you did not have the, uh, the balanced energy and that's why it didn't work out, but you don't need to fear that anymore because you're on the phone with us and, uh, <laughs> you know, and you've been learning this. Cause I know not your first time calling either I'm talking to you in the past. So, uh, so I know that now you're making stronger decisions than you used to, you know, um, that being said, we're going to get you to, with that being said, we're going to get you new, to a new level. That's that's what I'm calling here today. So um, we we'll get you you know centered, and we get you balanced here, so that you, your anxiety doesn't come an issue. It doesn't come into the play like when you think about this. That's what we want. So if we can get that hurdle out of the way, like that would be great. So that when you think about your business next time, like tomorrow or this evening, even that, that's not the first thing that comes to you, and it's not. It's like, okay, maybe there'll be another, but at least we cleared that first one. And then so it'll be up to you to apply the process and continue to clear the, the next hurdle by by doing what I'm explaining. So this uh, first hurdle. Just, oh, sorry, Phil. I was, I was just going to check in with Marcus um, to see sure. um, how, how, what number are you at now? Because I felt you. Um, I would say maybe like a Mar three. Marcus? Or two. Yeah, it's like a three or yeah. two. Yeah, and so um, at about a three. And so um, we just want to, um, it's it's coming up just uh, expectation and anticipation. Um, those are two of my cards, and I forgot to pick a card for the from my dragon deck like I usually do on the radio show now. And those are the two. They're the twins. You expect something to happen in a certain way, and then those expectations are not met. So um, I prefer to think of it as anticipation now. Um, Phil, I know you're still working on him. I can feel that in the background, and we have to take a short break. Marcus, if you want to hang on uh, over the break, when we come back, we'll check in with you, and we'll see 
where you're at with this. Um, I am Colette Marie Steffen. You are listening to The Truth is Funny. You can connect with me at thetruthisfunny.com and at talesfromthevector.com for energy correcting cards and paintings that are now available. And uh, you can on social media at Facebook and Twitter um, at The Truth Funny with Colette. We will be right back after this short break. 1-800-930-2819. Let's make more shift happen. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Tune in to the hit show, Mouthing Off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. What is a brilliant culture, and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. This is Colette Marie Stephan. You're listening to The Truth is Funny, and we have Feel Free on today, and we have Marcus on the, on the phone. And Marcus, uh, Phil and I have been working on this uh, energetic weaknesses over the break, and it's kicking up those expectations, and, and they're actually um, expectations that other people around you have that, you know, this online business could fail, and we went, we were uh, shifting the energy to, um, re- for you to recognize that you can go inward and get yourself strong and be calm. Um, um, I just would like to check in with you, Marcus, and just see where you're at now. Well, actually, I feel I feel a lot more calmer about the situation. Basically, maybe a zero. Everything basically went calmer. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Phil. Do you want to tell him he's calmer now? Because <laughs> we have another <laughs> caller, Marcus, and I'm going to get Phil to tell you why. Because sometimes people want to know why. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like Khaled was mentioning, we were clearing some of the expectations. You're clearing some of the expectations of those around you and the pressures you might have felt to satisfy them and all that. 
essentially it's just it's not that we're like you know disconnecting you from those people but we'll, we'll, we'll decrease your energy and say you're above being bothered by any whether people are depending on you whether they have expectations of you or not that it's not affecting you that you're going to do this for because it's the best thing to do and because you you're strong to it and uh and other people will benefit you know as a trickle down effect you know just because you're strong and uh if you continue you're making decisions like that in your life just that you're strong to initially there you might get some negative reactions from certain people who don't want to go along with that but Ideally, you know, I mean, ideally, ultimately, you're going to, you know, attract, you know, the people around you will get stronger with you or you're going to attract stronger people, one or the other or both. <laughs> Good advice. Thank you so much for calling in, Marcus. Um, Brian, I, we have another caller. Yes, who, indeed, who we do. Call? Tell us about the <laughs> girl from New York City. Her name is Sue. Welcome to our program. Thank you. <laughs> Hi Sue. Hi Carla. What can we do? For, what can we do for you today? I I start things and don't finish them, and I am better at giving away free things than charging for things. And I I just seem to be um, like I I started a class to get certified in something and I'm reluctant to take the test even though they're going to list my name on a website and I could get clients perhaps. So I'm sort of circling. Okay. Okay. So on a scale of 0 to 10 this circling it's it's coming up. Um and it's a 10. Where are you it's, on that scale? It lasted so long. It's been it's okay. a 10. I didn't realize that until listening to the okay. program. So, um, yeah, okay. So one thing I want to say, you know, the circle is the master symbol for a reason, because um, the circle <laughs> master teaches us symbol sounds good. that um, there's no beginning, there's no center, and there's no end. Because <laughs> um, you could draw a circle for the rest of your life if you want. <laughs> Phil. I don't. What are you picking up here? Okay, so uh, um, I'm going to ask Sue, um, how are you, how has the, this problem, this circling, most affected you recently? Um, well, I do, um, it affects me in all kinds of ways because I, as an idea person, I have lots of circles going. So I just jump from circle to circle. Okay, got you. And right. we're not talking Google circles here where you actually get clients, <laughs> Phil. No, 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 no. I got you. No. <laughs> Good clarification on that. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I'm Phil. Gonna, I'm going to throw out a little piece of information here. Um, about six weeks ago or whatever it was, I was uh, on this show and uh, we had uh, – my brother on talking about uh, personalities. Um, I, I would uh, recommend that you you look into this because a lot of the things you're saying sound very familiar, actually. Um, but basically, um, something called the Enneagram, E double N E G R A M. I have. And, uh, it'll tell you about know someone who uses it. Yeah, you know about that. Yeah. Cool. Do you know what type you are? Uh, no. The opportunity was given to me to deal with the Enneagram, and I turned it down. So I guess I need to call and <laughs> deal with it. That was about a year okay, and a half well, ago. <laughs> I'm telling you that uh, you are, in all likelihood, a, a four or five. Okay? And basically, yeah, so we're just going to get you strong to that, all right? Um we're going to get you strong to um, basically getting your ideas into reality, okay? So a lot of it is you're in your fantasy a lot, and that's okay as long as you know how to bring your fantasy into reality. So sometimes it's, uh, your tendency is to want to stay in your fantasy because the fantasy is better than reality sometimes. Really? Am I correct? Really? <laughs> Am I correct? Am I correct so far? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. I spend a lot of time I'm having ideas for other. 
I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. I spend a lot of time Wait, handing out so? ideas freely to other people, as well as myself. So giving away ideas to other people, um, one thing I have to say about that is once you have a thought formed, that thought file belongs to the universe. And other people will have access to that thought automatically because you thought it <laughs> and we're all connected. And so uh, strengthening everybody to that, um, you know, good ideas don't just usually come to one person. Good ideas have a tendency to through the universe. And uh, a lot of the times people will have good ideas and they think it's really original, but it's actually an idea that on the other side of the world, there's, you know, uh, however many other people who also got the same idea because the thought was formed. And so um, there's a lot of people that um, get really triggered by this, thought that, their, that their thoughts would be stolen or they give their thoughts away and then someone else uses their thought and then that thought turns out to be like a big money maker for them. Uh, the difference between having a thought and bringing a thought into manifestation is action. The universe wants to see action. And so uh, for myself, when I uh, have a thought and I see the big picture, then I start to take consistent steps of action towards that thought. That might be like just one little thing that day that I do uh, to improve that situation. But I make sure it's like I, I've spoken about this before. It's like if you plant a flower and you remember to water it, you know, for two days, the, the seed, and then you've to water it for a week it's very unlikely to grow yeah and, and my so thing and I'm, i just that give the uh, you know that consistent consistent yes so okay. um where are you at right now um number wise sue oh i'm more like a six thank you okay good so it's moving down phil what yes. else are you picking up here okay so uh the head, you know, you're in your head a lot. So just you neutral to being in your, you know, just, you know, the rest of your body too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for you again, I, I feel the feet is important for you to get in touch with the feet and your bottom of your feet, get you strong there. Um, because again, you have a lot of stuff going on in your head. So like I said, it's, it's a, for you and your personality type. A lot of this is about bridging your uh, ideas to reality. Okay. It's We need idea people in life. And, you know, um, so the tendency, though, is to, you know, live up there in those ideas. There's so many ideas and they're sometimes better than what the, the ones we're living in right now. So the thing is, we, you know, we need to bring that in. So believe it or not, you know, for, for you, uh, the perspective is could be strong, stronger. So part of it is like you don't believe that other people don't see things the way you do. And at the same time, Enneagram stuff will help you understand that uh, not all types are creative types. And you, you are probably, uh, if you are what I think you are, you're the most creative type. And that means that you got to understand that there's other people that look at a blank palette and all they see is a blank palette. You look at a blank palette and you see all kinds of possibility. And I know that because I'm the same way as you. <laughs> Phil and you and I all share the same number. <laughs> when I see a blank canvas, I see dragons. <laughs> and and then, you see beautiful and dragons. Tell me, you know. So and so, and I'm from here, and I'm from this country, and then they tell me what color they want to be, and the next thing you know, I'm I've got another three by four painting that I'm working. Yeah, <laughs> um, my, uh, it, it's it's very funny about um, when you when we have all these beautiful ideas, we want to strengthen that for you that you know the perspective that you could focus on um, idea and see where it takes you. And, um, you know, uh, out of this, you know, on any given day, I could have like five ideas. Um, and because I talk to so many people, I pick up ideas from them also. So I just want to strengthen this for everybody. We have to take a short break. When we come back, Sue, um, we'll check in with you where you're at. And we have another caller that we would like to take quickly that call. If we don't run out of him in radio land, <laughs> we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 
Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to transformationradio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Awareness is universal. Establishing a living awareness through meditation brings peaceful, healthy, and creative well-being into your everyday life. The practice of living awareness, Spirit Fire's own meditation practice, is built on this belief and is designed for every level of practitioner. Each year, Spirit Fire hosts living awareness meditation retreats that allow you to explore the practice in depth at our retreat center in beautiful western Massachusetts. Introduce yourself to meditation and the practice at the Foundations Retreat. Attend, in silence, a silent meditation retreat focused on mindfulness, presence, and nature. Or be engaged with the meditation sittings themselves at the Deepening Retreat. Start adding to your awareness and attend a meditation retreat designed to cultivate consciousness in your everyday life. For details on attending a Living Awareness Meditation Retreat, visit upcoming events at www.spiritfire.com. Chris Stanis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Tune in to the hit show, Mouthing Off, with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. This is Colette Marie Steffen with The Truth is Funny. I have Phil Free on the show with me today, and I have Sue. And Sue, we were just working on you through the break. Where are you now? Uh, you did great. Number I'm wise. at about a one. <laughs> so thank you very much. That's terrific. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I, I can you're, see you're, I need an your assistant who will. As in the next few... Okay. I'm sorry. You're... Perception in the next few moments, I'm getting you'll be down to zero in no time. <laughs> I think so, too. Um, Brian, All we right. have another call. Yeah, thank you so much, Colette and Phil. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sue, for calling yeah. in. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, Sue was cutting in and out a little bit there, so I couldn't hear her. Uh, and her let's take that, Julie but, um, from Brian, Canada we next. Another caller? Yep, we got Julie from Canada next. All right. Are you there, Julie? Julie, oh, wait a minute. Come on down. <laughs> Julie, are you there now? I, I am. I am. I am. Can you hear me? Yes. What can we do for you, you okay. Phil and I do for you too, Julie? Hi. Hi again. Um, 
Actually, everything that Sue said applies to me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just want to just kind of get over some, move through some I guess, blocks I feel like I've set up for myself in terms of um, creative process. Um, and uh, I'm not making money right now, but I, I, I seem to not want to compromise. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have a thing when I'm working on my own work that sometimes I hate it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, it's very kind of triggering, um, sometimes when I'm, when I'm doing my own creative work. So I just want to move through that in a way that's graceful. Or maybe it won't be, but. <laughs> yeah, the grace part, yeah, sometimes success is better than perfect failure. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> what are you picking up for Julie? Well, how much about it? Feel zero ten real quick. How much about it bothers me? Julie? Yeah, Hi. on a scale of zero to ten. Ten being the um, worst, which is this bothering. When I'm in the thick of it, like I, I'd say like an eight. Okay. Phil? Okay. All right. So uh, same thing. Okay. So we're going to get you centered here. Um, so the same thing. We're going to ground your idea. So yeah, since you said you have that you can uh, relate to with Sue, it's possibly have the same personality type as well. Um, we're going to get you strong to um, grounding these ideas. It's the same thing. Is this whole theme is finding out which thoughts are good ones and which ones are good ones. So, I mean, it's not a question of good and bad so much as like, okay, noticing the reaction, you know, and uh, are there bothersome reaction For you, when you have your ideas, you know, since you're such, you're probably, you know, you have a lot of them, it sounds like, um, you're going to have to fill a bit, you know, uh, it's like, them are good ideas, but there's a lot of details to work through to get them into a reality. So let's get you strong to all it takes, you know, to get these good ideas into reality. All right. To get you strong to the test that it puts through the emotion up the sensations that's the same thing like i've been saying all show all the whether it's a thought a sensation or emotion get yourself centered you know put your, on this midline of ours and um hold it there for a moment or as long until you feel calm and then again this idea and you'll way through this process like my reaction at first it seems a little small but you know this is just the start it gets a lot better, trust me <laughs> And picking up here um, for you, Julie, is just um, it's kind of like old garbage. And it's kind of like our first caller, Mark, the anxiety or the story that you're telling yourself about yourself is um, accurate. And um, it's an old story. And uh, it's an and, and I'm picking some ancestral, um, you know, um, energy of um, that unless it's really, really hard work and you really, really, really struggling with, there's no way that, you know, you would be able to, um, be able to be successful. And so, uh, we're just going to strengthen that for everybody. There can be ease in life. There can be flow. Um, uh, I'm sitting here looking at my dragon flow. <laughs> uh, she's about flow. And that is about centering yourself and allowing, allowing all the information that you have to come to you, um, just like you would bring up a file in a computer so that you're not asking yourself. It's, in your case, it's coming up partly here too where it's like um, the old emotions seeping in and create out in your mind and, uh, and then your mind if you if, if you allow your mind your mind will run away with that idea like a dog chasing its tail in circles and so we want to strengthen all of that for you also um, I, I would just like to ask you because we will run out of time pretty quick here uh, what number you're at now has it shifted for you at all yeah, I think I'm feeling energy, and I'm feeling it's like probably five, four, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you, you know, it's, it's. Um, we want to strengthen you to that. How quickly you manage to get, you know, um, yourself to this four. We're clearing the blocks, and then you're doing the work. So we're just going to strengthen that for you that um, you are able to do this for yourself, Phil. Um, what else? 
Right. So let's get a lot of the self doubt out of the way. So right now there's a lot of thinking that is sabotaging you. So like I said, instead of believing your thoughts, and that's kind of the theme of the show too, let's not believe thoughts. Let's just notice whether they're solid or they're not solid. If they're filled with reactions, then either there's a lot to do or, you know, there's a lot of work to do with that or just don't do it. You know? Uh, so it's just, if it's, if it's a very good idea, it may be worth doing, but again, it just, you have to put in the work. So again, when I say put in the work, like uh, that Colette was also mentioning you and uh, what you associate with hard work. So you'd be surprised. A lot of people sit at desks, you know, even though they're working 40 hours a week, uh, it's like they may not get more than an hour or two of productive work done in a given week. And you may get more than that done, you know, before you even get dressed some days. So for you, it's valuing the work that you do and not overvaluing the work that others do. All right. Ideally, mm-hmm. again, it's right now, it's just, it's not that you want to undervalue others either. It's the balance. But up to now, it's like you've been overvaluing others' work and undervaluing your own. So just getting more real with yourself. And, you know, work isn't these, like Colette said, this slaving process all the time. Most of work nowadays is mental. Some people do physical work, but in this country and probably the country you're calling from, which I assume is the U.S., uh, you know, and it's a lot of people work with minds. Actually, she's from Canada, and as Canadians, we don't work hard. We're lazy, right? <laughs> right, Julie? Yeah. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I could always work harder, or whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How? Wh- what number are you at now? Um, I'm getting a zero, two or zero. So I'm going back and forth. So yeah. There we go, Phil. Three for three. We have um, we have about one minute left, Phil. So. Um, I just want to thank you. I want to thank Brian for taking the calls. I want to thank all the callers for calling in. And I just wanted to say that um, for those of you who have been asking, uh, the uh, Call to Dance seminar will be a go in September 22nd, 23rd, 24th. That will be uh, layer one and layer two, 29, 30, and October 1st. Phil, any last words before we get off the air? You've got about one minute. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Um, yeah. So this thought thing, just getting ourselves to not uh, act, uh, you know, before we know if this is solid. And uh, obviously it's going to happen that we are going to do it. But let's not wonder why after the fact, you know, things didn't work out. We have to sense ourselves, be honest with ourselves. Did we react to this or not? If so, get those reactions squared away before taking the actions. So, yeah. We want to be strong to our thought and our feeling working in harmony. The bottom line. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for um, all the listeners listening in and the people calling in. And uh, and I say, Brian and Phil, it's been awesome. What a great way to start the day. I'm off now to take my vehicle in to um, have an airbag exchange. (laughs) I'll be back next week, Wednesday, 8 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. Bye for now. You've been listening to The Truth Is Funny with Colette Steffen. Tune in to The Truth Is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network as she provides energetic shifts and consistent results in every area of life, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmos joke. The truth is funny. Visit the truth is funny.com for more information. That's the truth is funny.com.